starring Tommy Rettig as Jeff Miller. Jan Clayton as his mother, Ellen. George Cleveland as Gramps. And, of course, Lassie. What you making? I say, what you making? Hi, Gramps. Space helmets. Huh? Space helmets. Me and Porky are going to play spacemen when his pop brings them over. <laughs> Looks like an old lard can to me. Aw, oh, Gramps, can't you ever make believe? Guess not. Maybe I'm getting old. <laughs> Sweet corn, coming good. Oh, thank you, dear. Oh, say, if you've got a minute, there's something I want you to do for me. Now, wait a minute, Ellen. Don't you try to find any extra chores for me to do today. Remember, this is Saturday. Well, heaven forbid I would do anything to interfere with your Saturday. I was just going to suggest that you taste the lemonade that I made for you and Matt to see if there's enough sugar in it. Oh, well, that, that's different. Where is it? <laughs> it's over on the sink. Yeah. You know, playing checkers is hot work. Um, that's fine, Ellen. Just right. Oh, thank you, dear. You better get out of here before I think of something else that might interfere Look, with your precious Look, I that, checkers. but Matt and me have been playing checkers every Saturday for years. Oh. I know, I know, you and Matt, Damon and Pythias of the barnyard. You got no reason to call me names. <laughs> oh, Dad. Damon and Pythias were two friends in great Greek mythology. Did they play checkers, too? <laughs> get <out of> <laughs> Captain the Navigator, come in, please. Who's an alligator? I said Navigator. Oh. Hey, you got a whole time to play on. Any reason why you got to pick this spot? Sorry, Gramps. Boy, when they're playing checkers, the whole world's got to stop. You're not kidding. You'd think that they were playing for a million dollars instead of ten cents a game. You did that on purpose. I did not. You did. You didn't know the next move to make, so you bumped the board. I never touched it. You don't know what you need. I don't give a hoot about the dime, but I... No, no more than your right arm. Look who's talking. You're the cheapest checker player in, the, in seven counties. But I don't cheat. You call me a cheater? If the shoe fits, wear it. Look! I don't take that kind of talk. What's going on out here? What's all this about? He said I was cheating, so he gets you with a checker board. I'm trying to get in there. One at a time. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Oh, I got nothing to say. I wouldn't lower myself. My father always used to say, never get in a spitting contest with a skunk. Why, you overstuffed yeah. rhinoceros, you? Now stop it, both of you. Stop it. Aren't you ashamed of yourselves? Fighting like a couple of children and, and in front of the boys. It's all right, Miss Miller. We don't mind. Come on, Sylvester. We're getting out of here. Oh, gee, Pop, I don't want to go. You heard me. This ain't no decent atmosphere for no honest boy. From now on, you're not to set foot on this place. But, Mr. Bruce, You I... keep quiet and go ahead. Get off my property. And you keep away from his farm, too. Oh, now, wait a minute. This is ridiculous. You two have been friends for 20 years. Now, isn't it silly to be fighting over a, a checker game? It isn't the game. It's the principle. Principle, my eye. It's the 10 cents you're worried about, you skin flint. There. That's what I care about, the dime. I wouldn't touch a crumbing dime for anything. And you running for treasurer of the Grange. Why, you ain't even fit to run as treasurer for the Wednesday sewing circle. Come on, Sylvester. Nobody else wants this dime. I might as well take it. Thanks. Phew, it's warm out. Oh, Dad, the rest of your lemonade is in the icebox. Uh -huh. The lemonade. You and Matt only drank half a pitcher. The rest is in the icebox. I don't want any. All right, maybe later. I don't want any later, either. You mean you've sworn off lemonade because you and Matt quarreled? Now, look here, Ellen. Stop nagging at me. I'm a grown man, and I don't like to be treated like a baby. In the first place, I'm not nagging you. In the second place, if you act like a baby, you're going to be treated like one. Incidentally, I had no intention of bringing this up. I was going to let you stew in your own juice. 
But now that you have mentioned it, I would like for you to know that I was shocked at your exhibition of bad temper. Well, what about Matt? Matt Brockway is not my problem. You are. Oh, Dad, I can understand people having differences of opinion. We all do. But to almost get into a fist fight with a man you've known all of your life over a silly checker game. It wasn't silly at all. Oh, pardon me. It's the most important checker game in the world. The fate of the universe hung in balance. Civilization waited with bated breath. Oh, now you're talking foolish. Am I? No more foolish than you and Matt standing out in that yard shouting at each other like a couple of fat fishwives. Well, he's more fat than I am. Maybe. Around the middle. And just what is that supposed to mean? What do you think it means? Well, if it means what I think it means, it ain't funny. Oh, Dad is not supposed to be funny. But really, Matt was your guest. Now that you've calmed down a little bit, well, the least you can do is call him and apologize. Me apologize for him? Now, don't fly off the handle. Oh, Dad, do it for Jeff if you won't do it for anybody else. What's Jeff got to do with it? He and Porky are the innocent victims. Poor Jeff's been mooning around here like a, like a sick calf with nothing to do. Well, I'll find something for him to do. The corn needs hoeing, the, the wood needs stacking, and the garden needs weeding. Now, where is he? Oh, I don't know. He came in here a little while ago to get an apple, looking like he'd lost his best friend. Which he has. Now, why should he have to suffer for something that you did? Listen, I didn't do anything. He knocked over the board on account of... I, I was... know, I know. Oh, Dad, what difference does it make? You and Matt have been close friends for 20 years. Well, we're not good friends anymore. Not on the count of the names he called me. What about the names you called him? Well, his was worse than mine. Oh. Now, you don't have to shake your head. I'm doing what I'm doing, and I'm going to keep on doing it, that's all. You won't call, Matt? No, I won't! Mom! Yes, dear? Mom, Grim said I couldn't go to Porky's farm, and Porky's pop said that he couldn't come to our farm, right? Right. Well, neither of them said that we couldn't meet someplace, did they? Nope, I don't believe they did. Thanks, Mom! Bridge. Bridge. B R I G. B R I J. Hey, Lassie, take it to Porky. Go on, Lassie, Porky. my mom. Graham says I couldn't come to your farm and your pop said you couldn't come to mine. This is nobody's farm. Yeah, I guess so. Now look, Porky, we gotta figure some way to get Gramps and your pop to make friends again. How? Hey, suppose Gramps was on a runaway horse and your pop caught the horse and saved him. How could he catch a horse? He can't even catch me. I guess you're right. I got a big one! It ain't a fish, but it's big. What's your pop maddest about? Everything. He's got to be madder about one thing more than he is about another. Well, he's pretty mad about your Graham saying he wasn't fit to be treasurer of the Wednesday sewing circle. All right. What if you told him you heard Graham say he didn't mean it? First, I'd get my ears boxed off for being near enough to your Grams to hear it, on account of I'm not supposed to set foot on your farm. Second, I'd get my ears knocked off for telling a lie, because my pop wouldn't believe me. Third, I'd get my ears knocked off just on account of mentioning your Grams' name. I don't have enough ears. Wait a minute. I've got an idea. It better be good. It is. You got a hand printing set for Christmas, didn't you? Yeah. All right. 
What if we printed up some handbills about the election for treasurer of the Grange and we passed them out at all the farms? What good would that do? Well, your pop wants to get elected treasurer, doesn't he? Boy, and how? All right. So we print up the handbills, and on the handbills, Gramps says something nice about your pop, and it helps him to get elected. Then they gotta make up. Hey! Now all we gotta figure out is what to say. How long will it take you to print them? How many? Oh, 20 or 30. About an hour. Come on, we can have them handed out by tonight, and maybe by tonight they'll be twins again. Hi, Mom. Hi, sweetie. Watch it, they're hot. Oh, now, honey, you know that sweets aren't good for Lassie. Oh, a little won't hurt her, Mom. Where you been all afternoon? Oh, around. You look like the cat that swallowed the canary. Huh? Jesse Porky. Yeah, we got it all figured out. You have? By tonight, Gramps and Porky's pop will be friends again. Oh, that's wonderful. How'd you manage it? You'll see. It's the constable, Clay Horton. How are you, Jeff? Fine. Hello, Clay. Hello, Ellen. Won't you sit down and have a, have a cup of tea and some cookies? No, thanks, Ellen. I just had a bottle of pop in town. Is uh, Mr. Miller on? Well, I think he's in the parlor. Jeff, tell Gramps if Clay Horton's here. Gramps, Clay Horton's here! That is telling him. <laughs> oh, go on, sit down, Clay. I'll just be a minute. Hello, Clay. Oh, cookies, huh? Well, Miller. Well, you uh, know about this, I'm sure. Where'd this come from? Well, what is it? Where'd it come from? This is terrible. Who did it? Who's responsible for this? Jeff, what do you know about this? Well, uh, if you want to know if I printed it, if that's what you want to know, I didn't. But who did? Well? All right. It was my idea. You see, the big thing that Porky's pop was mad about is that you said he wasn't fit to be treasurer of the Wednesday Sewing Circle. So I thought if you said he was fit, well, then he wouldn't be mad anymore. And since when do you have to talk for me? Since when? Since no time. Mr. Miller, I'm sorry to have to do this, but Mr. Brockway swore out a suit against you for libel and defamation of character. And I've got to serve you with a subpoena. what your note says, but I think you'll find that he's run away from home. I'm not supposed to, but I'll read you mine. Dear Mom, I'm not really running away, so don't get worried. Porky and me are just going to hide in Tucker's woods till Gramps and Mr. Brockway come get us. If they think we're in trouble and come rescue us, maybe they'll make up and be friends again. Call Porky's mom and tell her. Love, Jeff. What does yours say? Uh, dear Gramps, I'm running away from home because you will not let Porky and me be friends. Love, Jeff. Now, do you see how important it is to those two kids that you and Matt patch up your quarrel? After he swore out a suit against me, not on your life. Oh, just a minute. Come here. Matt's just as stubborn as you are. I was talking to Bertie this afternoon, and she had... You have no right to interfere. I have every right. It involves my son. Now, look, I... I... Oh, why don't you be quiet and listen for a change? Now, after supper, we're driving into town. I've made arrangements for you and Matt and Bertie and me to meet at Caleb Brown's office. What? If a lawyer can't talk some sense into the two of you, I, I don't know who can. Do you certainly will. If you think I'm going to let those two kids sit out in the woods all night just because you and Matt are a, a couple of stubborn mules, well, you've got another think coming. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good and ripe. I don't know if I go 
there's quite enough to eat them. Be careful where you step. There's quicksand holes around here. It ain't meat and potatoes, but it's food. Won't do no good, Ellen. Go to Caleb. I'm Let telling me you. Be the judge of that, and I'll drive. You move over and growl into your beard. I ain't got no beard. Maybe you should have. Give you something to growl into. Hey, look at him over there. I'm full. Not me. Too bad you don't like blackberries, Lassie. Yeah! Help me! Help me! Help me! Help me! Get me out of here! Don't move! Help me, Jim! Jim! Jim, help! Help, Jim! Jim, help! Get him, pull you out! You got him! Stubborn than that, Broadway. Well, the two of you make a fine pair. What are you doing here? Come on, get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. I said get out. Noise and nuisance. Just like another Miller I could name. Whatever's going on here. Well, the confounded Miller dog. She's trying to say something to you. She wants you to follow her. Well, I ain't interested in what she oh, wants. Matt, sometimes I... Don't you realize the only time that Jeff girl is separated from that dog is when something's wrong and your son's with Jeff? Now, you sit right out and see what the dog wants. And well, I'll phone Ellen. You want me to go with you, girl? I, I know what you mean. I, I don't know what to think either, Birdie. Birdie Brockway. Now, what kind of a scheme are you two cooking up now? Shh. Go ahead, Bertie. I'm listening. Uh-huh. All right. Yes, I'll, I'll tell Dad. He's here right now. Look, I ain't interested in anything a Brockway would say. Lassie was over at the Brockway farm without Jeff. Oh. She barked and pulled at Matt until he followed her. I wonder what them two kids are up to now. I don't know. Look, Jeff's note said uh, Tucker's Woods, didn't it? Okay, you stay here. Oh, 
checkers Saturday? Sure thing. <laughs> <laughs> Did your pop really wallop you? No, he made believe, but he didn't want your gramps to know. Yeah, same deal here. <laughs> 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 